Hey guys, it's Hewley HD here, and it's finally time to cover glitches that still work in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Since there have already been a couple of mainline Pokemon games released for the Switch, it's almost impossible they will ever update this game again, meaning these glitches are here to stay forever. There are some glitches that have remained since the original release, while others have been discovered more recently. Everything from getting out of bounds, being in a completely different location than the game says, and even cloning Pokemon using curry. Yes, you heard that right, cloning using curry. There's lots to cover in this video, so let's get right into it. Let's kick this off with something that's nice and simple and probably one of the easiest glitches in the game. Just outside the town of Bolania is Glimwood Tangle, a dark, maze-like route that's pretty eerie. Well, this creepiness carries over if you try and do a surprise trade while in there. All you gotta do is connect to the internet and start one. Doesn't matter what the Pokemon is. Upon finding one, shout out Airy, the glitch will commence during the cutscene. See if you can spot it for yourself. For some reason, the top part of the screen, the Pokemon you're sending, will have a darker background than normal. And when your Pokemon is on screen, in my case Sobble, there won't be a little Pokeball outline that you see on the other Pokemon below. However, the yellow overlay will still appear on the Pokemon like it is there, as you can see with Sobble's face getting all distorted. I have no clue why this happens as it only occurs in Glimwood Tangle, nowhere else in the game. Here is a normal surprise trade cutscene as you see the background is a little brighter and the Pokeball outline is there. So again, I have no clue why it only happens here, maybe due to how dark it is in the area, but yeah, very easy to do and no real setup is even required. Sticking with surprise trades really quick, there's one small thing you can do anywhere. Have one carry out and as the cutscene is fading, immediately begin mashing Y to reopen the YCOM menu. Start another surprise trade and after the menu closes, you'll notice that the trade complete text box is still on screen from the previous one. I guess since you open the menu too fast, the game doesn't have time to clear the old one, so you won't know when you find a new one until the tiny Y button icon changes to the pink star thingy. But yeah, kinda pointless, but possible. Moving on to something a little more interesting, fake eggs. To try this out, catch a Pokemon and say yes to giving it a nickname. Now simply name it Egg with a capital E, exactly how a regular egg would be named. You'll notice the first effect of this glitch right away if you send it to your box. The text will read, the egg has been sent to a box, which is a little out of the ordinary as it wouldn't normally say that, it would just be like, Charmander has been sent to a box. Now actually going into your box, you can take a look at another similar effect. If you select it, it will say, what do you want to do with the egg? treating it as if it really was an egg. My best guess is that the game just has a trigger if something is named egg, it'll just shove a the in front of it. I was hoping for more oddities out of this, like not being able to have it as your only member in your party or something like that, but no luck. I believe the only real effect that comes out of this is the fact that it says the before most dialogue options. Kinda neat though. Guess we're gonna keep covering glitches in pairs here because this next glitch involves actual eggs. If you beat the main game of Sword or Shield, you'll have access to the IV checker when in your box. Press plus once to check the normal Pokemon stats, and then plus again to bring up the extra menu. This is what normally happens, but for some reason, if you hold the Pokemon with your cursor and then hover over an egg, it won't let you bring up the IV menu. It'll just cycle through the first two options of showing your Pokemon and the stats. It behaves like normal even when hovering over another Pokemon, but an egg? No dice. Weirdly enough, it'll do the same glitch if you put your cursor over any of the UI buttons like box number or box list. So eggs and the UI share some strange state where it doesn't let you bring up the IV checker. No clue why, but it's kinda weird. Okay, those were great and all, but let's cover something a little more interesting. The Bingus Zone. What the heck is that? It's a glitch state discovered by Jeems and Frez. Basically, it's a location glitch that's kinda easier just to show than explain. As you can see here, after ending a battle on Route 3, the banner at the bottom says I'm in Motostoke. Even when pulling up the map or catching a Pokemon, it will say it was caught in the city of Motostoke. So how is that possible? For some reason, there are extremely specific points throughout the game that can cause the player to display the incorrect location. However, it can only happen after the conclusion of a battle. You can't just run around and find them. These spots are called Bingus points, and there's ones on Route 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, and a whole bunch in the wild area. There are likely more than just the ones I listed, but people kind of have to find them accidentally. Like I said, you must end a battle while standing on the exact right tile of the ground. Meaning that to pull it off, you pretty much have to stand on that point and wait for a Pokemon in the overworld to run into you. Or you could get extremely lucky and run into one yourself and just so happen to be standing on the right tile when you do so. There's a big Google Doc that Jeems created that showcases all the known Bingus points, which is what I used to find a couple for myself. The first place I got it was on Route 3. This patch of grass has a handful of different spots you can stand in, but this is the one that worked for me. I used the rocks in the background as well as a lot of guessing to line myself up perfectly, but when you do and end a battle, the header will come flying in and display Motostoke. 
Not only that, the music will change to match the city's theme. It's super weird to hear the city theme while on a regular route with Pokemon running around. Since these points are super specific, you'll likely correct the glitch and be back to the correct location as soon as you take a single step. So I saved my game here just to keep the glitch. Again, as you can see here, it says Motostoke as well. I then waited for another Pokemon to run into me, which took a little bit, but when it did, I caught it. Looking at the summary, you can see it says the city of Motostoke. So that's neat. Moving on to a spot in the wild area, this Bingus point is in Bridge Field. Again, these spots are very precise, so I had to line up the shadow and the exact blades of grass that I saw in the picture on the Google Doc. But if you get it successfully here, it'll relocate you to the meetup spot, which is where you first enter the wild area at the beginning of the game. I couldn't get an encounter here, unfortunately, but what I did get was the weather to change from snowing to sunny, which if you're familiar with wild area spawns, Cub Chew only spawns in the grass if the weather is snowing. So you can kind of spoof the spawns and the weather as well using the Bingus Zone. These are just two of the spots you can get the glitch to work in, but there's roughly 20 more points that it's possible in. It's a pain to find the exact pixel you're supposed to stand on, and I think you get the idea at this point, so let's move away from the Bingus Zone. The Rotom Bike, a great piece of technology to get you from point A to point B faster. However, there's a little bug that you might have noticed yourself while playing. When going at normal speed, you have a pretty tight turning radius. When I'm on this bridge, I can practically do a figure eight before touching the other side. But when you press B to accelerate, your turning radius becomes larger to match the extra speed that you're getting, so you can't turn as sharply. Pretty standard stuff here, right? But if you interrupt the bike while accelerating, the turning radius will remain large, even while going slow. What I mean by that is, if you talk to an NPC or open a menu as you start to accelerate, when you go back to take control of the bike, it'll be slow like you didn't accelerate, but never correct itself from the fast speed turning radius. So now we're slow and can't turn as sharply as we should be able to. This state will remain until you either accelerate again or hop on and off your bike. Let me know if you've ever noticed this while playing, as it's kind of annoying not being able to turn as sharply. Haha, <laughs> you thought we were done with pairings? This one involves turning as well, but with an NPC. These ingredient sellers can be found in the wild area with big puffy green jackets. If you stand behind them, they will turn around. Whoa ho ho. If you make them turn and then quickly run around to the other side, you can make them yell at nothing while you're talking to their back. Really crazy, I know. It's just weird to see that the other NPC, the Watt Trader, won't have this happen as they'll always turn to face you. So yeah, it's fun to make this guy talk to a brick wall, but that's about it. Let's talk about a Pokemon specific glitch with Silvalli. According to the wiki, he is programmed to be able to learn all three of the Pledge moves, Grass Pledge, Fire Pledge, and Water Pledge. Upon visiting the Move Tutor in Hammerlock that's supposed to teach you these Pledge moves, the only one he will give Silvalli is Grass Pledge. It doesn't matter what type you change him to using memory items, it will always be Grass. Perhaps since Silvalli is a normal type at his base, the game just ignores the fact that he is able to even change type so it just stays at Grass. Very annoying if you were planning on using a Fire or Water type as it kind of throws a wrench in things. Let's talk about another Pokemon specific glitch, Stunfisk. As you're probably aware, Stunfisk got a new form in Galar, so there's two different types of him. But the video game itself does not recognize this. When breeding Pokemon, you're able to throw in two different regional forms of the same Pokemon. If my understanding is correct, if you give one of them an Everstone, it'll pass down that regional form to the eggs. So if I were to only give the Univin one an Everstone, the eggs would only hatch Univin Stunfisk. If they're both holding Everstones, it would take the female parent's form. So in this case, the Galarian Stunfisk. But, because the game doesn't treat this Stunfisk as a regional form, for some reason the only eggs that will ever hatch are Univin ones. This is incredibly annoying as it only happens to this specific Pokemon. Why? Okay, it's time for one of the more classic glitches in this game, getting out of bounds. Not only can we mess around on Route 3, but also fly above Motostoke like a bird. There is one catch to this glitch as we need to have an online subscription purchase as we need to do an online battle. As weird as that sounds. But anyway, if you have it, you can do this glitch. Travel around Route 3 until you find this berry tree. We now need to enter a ranked Pokemon battle like I mentioned before. So hit the Versus tab and click on Battle Stadium. I'm not sure why it has to be ranked, but I believe it cannot be casual. So apologies if you have a good rank, but we're planning on immediately forfeiting the match. Technically speaking, you can actually do the battle and try, but I don't have time for that and I don't care about my rank. So as soon as I join the battle, I click Run and Leave. You're welcome, RJ. FC for the free win. Enjoy it. Now from this point, just back out of all the menus. So you may be wondering, why the heck do we need to do that to get out of bounds? Well, by entering a ranked battle, the game continues to assume that we're connected to the internet and to sync whatever time we set our switch at. 
As you can see here, I went to the switch system settings, changed it to later at night, and immediately after reopening the game, the screen flickered and turned dark. Without going into a ranked battle beforehand, this would not happen. It would just ignore you changing the date and stay the same. Why is this important? Because we need to shake this berry tree multiple times in a row, which will make sense in a second, so let's get started. Hop on your bike and line up against the tree almost perpendicular to the stump. Then press A to bring up the shaking tree dialogue option. Upon pressing yes, you'll notice that your character automatically hops off your bike and shakes it. This is important. Continue shaking the dang thing until the Pokemon pops out at you. Unalive it, catch it, run from it, it doesn't matter. Just end the battle. After it tells you what berries you got, the game will place you back on your bike, but since you're so close to the tree, you'll notice that your front tire is now inside of it. This allows us to clip inside the tree, so carefully maneuver so your back is facing against these rocks, and your front tire is sticking out of the front like this. We now need to repeat this shaking step again, which is where time travel comes into play. Press home, go to your settings, and change your date a day forward. Upon opening the game again, the berries will magically spawn back on it. Nice. Now just do the same thing as before where you automatically get off your bike and encounter another Pokemon. After running from that one and hopping back on your bike, your positioning should be skewed enough where you can turn around and ride out of bounds. From this point, nothing is really off limits and it's difficult to clip back in bounds, so you're free to explore a lot of the route. We'll get to Motostoke in a minute. Come across this little ledge and you'll have access to everything else on the route. Heading left near the cave will cause you and the camera to clip under the world a little bit, allowing you to see some glitchy textures. Come around the back of the cave being careful not to hit the dark tunnel, as that's a load zone and the glitch will end. There's a little more to see if you head this way, ending up behind the fence, which kind of looks like you'd be able to access this normally. But yeah, you can talk to a few of the NPCs who are right against the wall and mess with some of the Pokemon nearby. You'll change elevation at seemingly random times, giving you even more to see. When you're ready for the second half of this glitch, hop on your bike and head for the little ledge we walked across earlier. For some reason, if you keep tapping left repeatedly while on the middle section of this ledge, your character will slowly rise up higher and higher. You gotta be careful though, as if you stray too far from the middle of this ledge, you'll plummet back down to the floor, forcing you to restart the entire process. There's an easier way to gain height, and it's a lot safer. Bob up a little bit into the air and then get off your bike. This will store whatever height you're at. Carefully walk straight down, get back on your bike, and shove yourself up against the front invisible wall. Repeatedly tap down, and you'll continue to gain height like before. But there's a lot more leeway, and I never fell back down even after going very far to the left and right. After a good 4 or 5 minutes of mashing and a sore thumb, your character will eventually pop through the ceiling, and we're even more out of bounds now. I'd recommend saving up here, as it won't screw up your save and will allow you to explore more without the risk of falling and having to start everything over again. When up here, you gotta be careful not to walk too close to actual ground, as it'll teleport your character down to it. You gotta stay a good few feet from anything you could normally walk on below. This is obviously easier said than done, as you can't really tell where you are since we're so high up. So I literally just went super far down and then hooked a right into Motostoke. But yeah, because we popped through the ceiling, we can ride right over to not only Motostoke, but the outskirts on the far right side. This area is all one big section, so we can travel between these three areas without hitting any load zones. Far away buildings will bug out a lot, sometimes only showing the light that emits from them, not the structure itself. Going more to the right, we can see the outskirts, as well as a really low resolution version of the wild area. It kind of looks like Scarlet and Violet, but yeah, the last thing I did was end up on the roof of the gym, which gave me some neat camera angles before falling down and hitting the load zone. Kind of forgot that this game saves automatically when you do hit a load zone, so I kind of lost my out-of-bounds save and was not going to do it again. That was pretty much all there was to see anyway. I love how much exploring you can do with this glitch, as it's fairly easy to do, so enjoy your views. Here's something new, a battle glitch. We need a pretty specific setup involving confusion, baton pass, and own tempo. To do it, the first Pokemon needs to get confused, whether it be by themselves using something like Outrage or the opposing Pokemon. The next turn, they need to use Baton Pass, which will carry the status effect over to the Pokemon that gets thrown out. This Pokemon must have the ability Own Tempo, which on paper means they can't be confused. But if you're in a situation where the opponent attacks first, it takes a turn in order for Own Tempo to take effect. I didn't exactly get the glitch here, but as you can see, Avalug with Own Tempo was Baton Passed into and was able to select an attack before the message even popped up. If Avalug were to outspeed the opponent here and go first, he would do the confusion animation with the birds flying around his head, and then maybe attack before the Own Tempo message popped up. But because Bisharp is obviously faster, it didn't work that way. Still, you can see the delay here as the Own Tempo should have popped right away when Avalug was thrown out, but it didn't. A super specific scenario, but it still can happen. 
Another battle-based glitch that's a lot easier to see is when you Dynamax a Pokemon. Pretty much during any battle, have one Dynamax and then take a look at that Pokemon summary. On the first screen, it'll show their normal moves like they weren't Dynamaxed, but when you check their specific summary, it'll show their moves as the max ones. So I believe this is a glitch as it's not consistent between the two menus and it's kind of a pain. But I feel like since they don't match up, this is in fact one. Okay, so this glitch is by far the most complicated and difficult one this game has to offer, but for some of you, it's worth it. It's possible to duplicate a Pokemon one for one. Its stats, held item, shininess, everything. You're basically cloning it. However, the setup is very complicated and by the end, you'll be sick of making curry. Yes, somehow it's possible to duplicate a Pokemon by cooking curry. You know, that Pokemon camp minigame that you probably tried once and never touched again? It's the main component for this glitch to work, but there's a lot to it. Before we get into it, I wanted to show what the final product looks like, just to keep you intrigued. So after making a high star curry like 3, 4, or 5 star, the Charizard class, a wild Pokemon can join your camp for you to add to your team. However, by doing this specific setup instead of the wild Pokemon joining your squad, a Pokemon that you already own will turn and try and join your team. Say yes, and a duplicated version of the Pokemon will be collected and thrown into your box with identical stats. Very nice, but how do you do it? So to start off, you're going to need a lot of ingredients and berries to make curries. And I mean a lot. So I just ran around the entire map shaking every tree I could find. I recommend the wild area as there's a bunch of trees and you don't have to do a lot of traveling. So, once you have a lot of berries and ingredients in your inventory, it's now time for the next step. But before we do that real quick, the technical information on this glitch is thanks to a YouTuber named Spike or Yundo. He made an entire video on this method, so I'm going to pull some of the stats and info he talked about, while also mixing in my own painful experience attempting this. Okay, next step. It's recommended that you need a full team of six consisting of large Pokemon, such as Salamence, Flygon, and Corviknight, ones that are noticeably big when inside of a Pokemon camp. Next, the Pokemon in slots three and four of your party need to be large floating Pokemon, and these are the two potential ones you can duplicate. So no, you can't duplicate any Pokemon in the game with this glitch, it has to be a large floating one. By floating, I mean they fly around while in the camp. The best Pokemon for this, in my opinion, and the one I got the glitch with, is Salamence. His hitbox is massive, and he flies around in the camp. Other confirmed Pokemon are Flygon, Corviknight, Garatina Origin Form, Moltres, Noivern, Lugia, Eternatus, and Galarian Weezing. There are likely more, but these have been the ones that are confirmed. Okay, now onto the Pokemon's social ability status. What is that? Upon the completion of making a curry, your Pokemon in the camp will receive sociability points depending on the rank of the curry you created. So the highest, Charizard 5 star rank will give you 20 points, 4 star 15, 3 star 10, 2 star 7, and 1 star 5. Once your Pokemon have an average of 200 sociability points, it will now have a chance to attract wild Pokemon. So for a quick example, if you made 10 Charizard class curries in a row, that would equal 200. But it can be a mix of 3 star, 4 star, 5 stars, anything really. Just has to be 200. Following you reaching 200 points, the next curry you make will affect the chances of a spawn. 5 star is 1 in 4 chance, 4 star is 1 in 5, 3 star is 1 out of 7, 2 star is 1 out of 20, and one star is one out of 100. So it's recommended that you make at least a three star curry after reaching 200 social ability points to have a chance at encountering one. But when you finally get a wild Pokemon to spawn, the next and final step is possible. When the wild one spawns, the Pokemon in your camp will likely be arranged like this, with the ones in slots three and four appearing closest to you in front of the wild one. This is what causes the glitch to activate. When trying to look at the wild Pokemon to call it over and join your camp, the game gets confused and treats the large floating Pokemon as the wild one. So in my case, the shiny Salamence basically blocks you and is treated as the one who wants to join. You can see this with the text coming up saying, Oh, Salamence has come to your camp. You can then simply say, yes, you may join, and send it off to the box. Upon packing up the camp and checking your box, you'll see that the Pokemon is still in your party and there's another duplicate one in the box. Huzzah, the glitch is complete, and you now have an exact copy of a Pokemon you already own. Ugh. Like I said at the start, this glitch is very complicated, so I just kept making curries while having a large team of six, and hope for the best. In my experience, I made roughly 80 to 100 dishes of curry before I duplicated my shiny salamence. So I am sick of mashing A to fan the flames and stirring the pot. I spent roughly 15 hours collectively over three days to get this to finally work. I was getting really discouraged on the verge of giving up when I finally got it. And oh boy, did it feel good to do so. So if you really, and I mean really want to duplicate a Pokemon and are willing to put in at least a few hours of curry creation, try it out and let me know how it goes.
Alright, so those were, to my knowledge, all the glitches that are still possible in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This game will always hold a special place in my heart as it was the first video I ever made to go viral. It's nuts, it's at 1.8 million views now. That's a lot of eyeballs. So it was only fitting that I give it the treatment it deserved with ones that still work today. Again, I would be shocked if this game ever receives another update. It's a few years old and Scarlet and Violet are out, along with Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So this game's gotta be out of the developers' minds at this point, so I think we're safe. Enjoy these and let me know in the comments which glitches you try out. Also, I am never making curry in this game again. But for now, I'm gonna get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!